Hi everybody and welcome to Safe Diving. So in today's video I'm going to cover the best way to check your weight properly and then put that lead exactly where you need it to be. So most divers are taught a quick way to check their buoyancy and weighting at the beginning of the dive and that's where a lot of divers stop. So I imagine somewhere at some time you were told to empty your BCD with your regulator in and a hand on your inflator and just hold a normal breath of air on the surface. If you floated around eye level or something like that, then you had the right amount of lead on your weight belt. You went on your dive, you enjoyed yourself, you got back, you filled out your logbook and whichever number that you wrote down next to weight is exactly how much lead you put on your weight belt next dive. There are also plenty of ways to mount your lead as well that most people don't think about. Most divers start with a common weight belt, they upgrade to integrated weights in their BCD, and that's about it. But there are plenty of ways to actually attach your lead so that you sit in the water perfectly and you're not using your muscles to hold yourself horizontal because your center of buoyancy is off. When you trim your weight properly, you will be so much more comfortable in the water and it all takes just a little bit of forward thinking and some help from a friend. So let's take a look at how to fix your weighting. First of all, let's take a look at why you may be weighted wrong. So most scuba divers dive with just too much lead, simply because that's how much lead they learned to dive with, and it worked for them then, so why wouldn't it work for them now? Well, there are a few reasons. Uh, so first of all, your equipment has probably changed. Underwater, every single piece of your equipment has its own buoyancy, and that's how much it floats or sinks. So remember that this is not how much it physically weighs, but how much it floats or sinks. And unless you're still diving in the exact same school equipment that you learned to dive with, then your new equipment will probably have a different buoyancy. You may have changed buoyancy too, yourself. Let's be honest, we're not all the same shape as we were 10 years ago. So your buoyancy, your personal buoyancy, may have actually changed too. And finally, the actual water that you're diving in will have different buoyancy as well. Remember learning that salt water was more buoyant than fresh water? Well, that is still true, but not all salt water has the same buoyancy, and not all fresh water is neither. So you may need more or less lead than when you first, or when you last did a buoyancy check. But What's so wrong with being overweighted, I hear you guys ask, and what's wrong with the standard buoyancy check? So first of all, being overweighted means that you will be using more gas in your BCD to compensate for that negative buoyancy. So first off, you're wasting perfectly good breathing gas. The next comes from changing your depth. As you ascend and descend, because you have a large amount of airspace inside your BCD now, your buoyancy will change much more radically than if you have no gas in your BCD whatsoever. Because of that, you'll need to fill and dump your BCD all the time, and that's just wasting gas over and over again. There's also a point at great depth granted, where too much lead on your weight belt will literally stop you from being able to ascend, even with a full BCD. Divers have sadly lost their lives because they dove just too deep with too much lead and literally couldn't swim back up. And an overladed weight belt or BCD is literally so heavy, so if you can strip off even one or two kilos then you're just making your own life that much easier. But why is the standard check so wrong? Well, first of all, it takes place right at the beginning of the dive, and all of your gear, even your wetsuit, will have little pockets of air just trapped in and around them, in the material, in the little corners of the gear, which all take a good 10 or 20 minutes of being submerged and kind of moved around to finally disappear. So this gas makes you that little bit more positively buoyant than you are right at the end of the dive. And when you first learned to dive and did your buoyancy, you check, you were probably a little bit apprehensive because it was your first dive, so you had a bit of a bigger lung full of air than you would normally. 
again, you're a little bit more buoyant. And at the beginning of the dive, your tank is at its least buoyant. So you see, when they're fully pressurized, they're actually more sinky than when they are at the end of the dive. And that's when you want to know that you have the perfect amount of lead to stay down so that you can actually do a shallow water stop without you know, swimming downwards to try and stay at three meters. Now, when you first start your next dive with this lead, you'll probably call me a liar because you now find it really hard to get down at first. But trust me, if you've done it properly, once you get down past the first meter or so, you will be able to stay down. If you do really struggle to get down or even stay down, then you may have some gas trapped somewhere or just, you just need to reassess how much lead you need again. There's also a second part to this test. Remember at the beginning when I mentioned trim? So trim is the scuba diving term for your position in the water. There's good trim, where you're nice and flat in the water, and there's bad trim, where you're either head up or bum up, uh, which means that you're just working that much harder than you actually need to, to either stay horizontal by using your back muscles, or you're constantly changing your depth because you're just always swimming slightly upwards. You're also not streamlined neither, so you're literally swimming into loads of water and encountering so much more drag than you need to. Like just like how uh, sort of wading through water upright is so much harder than actually swimming through water flat. You're going to need your buddy again for this and it's best done when you have plenty of time on your hands. Where you place your lead is all important. Just like your centre of gravity, it's important where your centre of buoyancy is as well. If someone is too top heavy with all their body weight up in their shoulders, then they're going to be really easy to push over. Whilst diving, you want your centre of buoyancy to be kind of somewhere in your chest. So you have full control of your position in the water without having to fight anything. And the easiest way to find out exactly where your center of buoyancy is, is to go on a dive and literally do nothing. Just relax everything and stop finning and just see how you naturally float in the water. Your buddy can then tell you exactly how you sit in the water, whether you're horizontal or not. Um, and now comes the fun part. So there are plenty of places to put your lead apart from just on your weight belt. You can place the lead at the front, at the side, and at the back of your weight belt. Uh, you can also put them in integrated uh, pockets in your BCD if you have those. Uh, in trim pockets on the back of your BCD around your tank band. And if your BCD doesn't have trim pouches per se, then you can thread lead blocks onto the actual cam band itself um, to basically move some lead a little bit higher. Uh, that way, if you're a bit head upright, it fixes that. If you need a little bit more, then you can sometimes thread some lead onto your shoulder straps themselves. That way you can get your head down. If you have floaty feet, then you can use a cam band to put some lead at the base of your tank, a little bit further down your body, or you can actually use ankle weights. So have a good play around and shift some lead around so now you know that you have the right amount. And then when you can float in the water nice and horizontal with no effort, you're done. So this can take some time to perfect because you're getting kitted up, you're seeing how you float in the water, back to the surface, shifting your gearing around, putting it back on and then trying it again. But once you get it just right, you'll know and you will be so much more comfortable in the water and your air will last much, much longer too. So how much lead do you put on your weight belt? I mean, personally, I put as little as two kilos in some places, um, none at all in fresh, warm water, uh, but I tend to dive with steel tanks. An Alley 80, which is like a 11 liter in salt water and just a rash vest, then yeah, I'll probably put about two kilos on a belt. But let me know in the comments below what you dive with and whether you dive shot lead or bricks, uh, because there's definitely a better one than the other. Um, let's discuss our weighting below. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. On my channel, I upload videos on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, all about how to be a better scuba diver. Now, I've been working in and around the diving industry for quite a long time now, and I have a lot of advice that I can help you out with. So if you need any help or advice with your diving, just let me know in the comments below and subscribe to my channel, and I'll probably make a video about it to help you out. 
So, if you want to, you can click here to check out one of my latest videos on how to upgrade your equipment and your diving as well, and then click here to check one of my scuba diving advice videos. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving.